You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all over the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. All right. Hello, listeners. You've got Murph and AP. And we are together again, right? Yeah. And what a delight. Oh my gosh, we just experienced an amazing evening. Actually, it's still going on, but we wanted to podcast real quick while it was still fresh in our heads. So do you want to tell everybody what we just did? Yes, we just watched the world premiere of Shift, the Ragbri documentary. Oh my gosh. And we've done several episodes. We'll make sure we put them in the show notes, the links to listen to the previous. Um, I think we... We had an episode right when it was a vision. Mm -hmm. Then we had an episode recently, which was like nobody had seen it yet. And now we've seen it. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. It was so awesome. Uh, We are here in Des Moines. Um, Do you like you're a Des Moinesian. So do you want to talk about the theater? Yeah, it was screened in the historic Varsity Theater, which is uh, in the Drake neighborhood of Des Moines. And it was built in 1917, and it's been a landmark in Des Moines for a long time, and it is a historic, designated as a historic landmark now. But um, it was recently completely renovated. It's so gorgeous inside, but it really has that like nostalgic theater vibe. Um, it was a really cool place to have the screening, and it made it really special. I agree, and it was sold out. So, I mean, every seat was full. I thought the energy of the crowd was really awesome. I mean, it was, you know, there were some, of course, times that kind of tugged at your heartstrings, and then there was times we were all laughing. So, I don't know. I absolutely loved the film. How about you? Oh, it was phenomenal. Uh, it was even better than I had. I had high hopes for it, and it was even better than I had thought. Um, yeah. And I think um, it's important to point this out, I guess. Maybe it's not, but we're going to point it out. (laughs) In that, um, you know, this is the 50th year for Ragbri, but this movie isn't necessarily like the history of Ragbri over 50 years. Um, Literally, the producers, uh, which we'll give a shout out to in a second, they took like different people that have done Ragbri or are part of Ragbri or experiencing Ragbri for the first time and told their stories. So it's really, it was a unique perspective from all of them. Yeah, I was talking to uh, the Ragbri director, Matt Fippen, after the event, and I was saying how, or we were discussing how it really made an impact for me in that I spend 24 hours a day thinking about Ragbri, living Ragbri. I am, you know, it's my life. But then it makes you realize it's also that for hundreds and thousands of other people and in different ways and so it was just really cool to get a perspective into um the other people that are riding rag by the people that enjoy the thing that we um work so hard to produce and uh really make it uh special so i want to give a shout out to courtney crowder and kelsey kramer who are the directors of shift they did just a phenomenal job uh courtney crowder is the iowa columnist for the des moines register she's just an a plus writer if you haven't read read her work in the past i highly recommend that you go to the des moines register and look her up um kelsey kramer has been a photographer for the des moines register for over a decade uh she's one of my favorite ragbri photographers whenever i look up pictures i look through a lot of pictures for my social media work and I see a really good one nine times out of ten it was by Kelsey (laughs) so uh, it was really cool to see their work and you can see their passion and their love of Ragbri and Iowa in the film yeah and then um, of course we got to watch the film and then after the film uh, Kelsey and Courtney got up on stage and then they brought along the entire cast so it was really fun to have them ask questions and talk a little bit about the filming process which I didn't know that they actually got 70 hours of filming done and they turned it into a one hour film. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's incredible. And they filmed it all in Ragbri in 2022 in Ragbri 49. And of course, we need to give shout outs to the cast members. So we've got Dana Chandler, who is uh, a Des Moinesian herself, uh, Tori Giffen, who is from Colorado Springs, Andrew and Ian are uh, Lansing, Iowa. And then, of course, Adam Lineberry from, I think he's from Alabama. Him and his son Liam were on the ride. So I, we, we don't want to spoil too much of it, but do, is there anything you want to share about the cast or like maybe, I don't know if you have a favorite part or anything like that? 
Oh, I couldn't pick a favorite part. I mean, they each each of the characters or the, each of the story arcs was special. And it really illuminated, I know a lot of these people personally, and it really illuminated their story and uh, showed what a special piece of drag bride they each are. Yes, and you're right. There are so many parts that I can't say that I had a favorite part, but I thoroughly enjoyed the very beginning of the movie. It was like this old black and white footage from, you know, Ragbri's past, and it kind of showed a little bit of the character of of Don O'Call and John Karras, you know, like when they're just kind of the personalities. It was cool. That is some of my favorite Ragbri footage. It's from Ragbri 2, the Ooh. Sag Bri, and it's John Karras is narrating it, and he's like, lemonade and hamburger stands and there's a banjo playing and it's just so classic and I just love that they incorporated that in the movie. Agreed and like nobody had helmets on everyone was wearing jean shorts you could tell they're all on you know super stick bikes with tiny tiny tires so that was cool so um, the other thing that I thought was really fun I think they opened the movie and ended it with that Ragbri song which is awesome so I wanted to uh, point out that it's performed by George McGargill so he's the guy that wrote the song Ragbri. And who knows, maybe it'll be like the new song, you know, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. And then the next <laughs> song will be um, Journey. And then the next song will maybe be Ragbri. Well, we are announcing the Ragbri bands this week. So like not to, you know, <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Wait, are you saying George McGargill may be up on stage? I'm saying he should be. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we are so happy that we got to see the premiere tonight, and there are many, many opportunities coming in the future so that everyone can see it. And I even, I'm reading the little uh, brochure that we received, and it does say that um, DVDs will eventually be available, and also they are working on getting it streamed and possibly on Iowa PBS in July. It's going to be on Iowa PBS. I'm, that's pretty exciting. Yeah, so statewide impact. Um, I know that Ian and Andrew, they were just on Iowa Public Radio with Charity Nebby. So I, obviously radio can't rewind, but like I think they have it um, available online where you can go back and listen to previous episodes. So look for, uh, I don't know, Wednesday or Thursday they're on with Charity Nebby. So it was, that's a really cool way to be featured and like, I also know that we do have a movie poster for sale on ragbri.com for pre-sale. Um, but I just really encourage you to see it in a movie theater. It's so cool. So, yeah, what a special experience. What a great night. Uh, it exceeded every expectations. And I, like I said, I had high expectations for it. So 10 out of 10 would recommend. <laughs> I agree. 10 out of 10. Recommend. Um, okay, well, let's wrap it up. We have a nice segment coming up from Mr. Mark Wyatt from the Iowa Bicycle Coalition, and he's just going to tell us a little bit about what he's been working on, what's going on in the future. So should we take a listen to Mr. Mark Wyatt? Hi, everybody. Mark Wyatt from the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. You may recognize my voice because I used to be in the host chair at the Just Go Bike podcast, and I hope you hear my voice more as uh, this uh, the springtime, the riding season kind of moves on. Although I don't think bicycling season ever sees a, an end. So let me tell you a little bit about the work that we're doing and, and get you caught up to where we're at. Uh, we've had a very busy legislative season. Um, we had three big bills that we were working on, plus appropriations. And uh, we've got further than we ever gotten before. But uh, this is the big... But um, is that things uh, ground to a halt just before we were able to get things across the finish line. Uh, the Iowa House was our big hang up and we've got some work to do there. And uh, we know that we've got to do some organizing in some rural parts of the state. Um, and uh, we've got a plan. Uh, we've been doing an advocacy analysis, an autopsy, if you, so to speak on our, our legislative project progress. And uh, I think we've got some solid plans moving forward. So see some big things from us in the future. Um, I'll just give you a quick highlight of, of what we did. Um, uh, probably the, the primary bill that we wanted to see passed was the hands-free requirement while driving, which would require your phone to be in hands-free or voice activated, activated mode if you were going to use it while driving. And, uh, 
I, you know, it's one of those distracted driving pieces that we've worked on over the years, and, and we're really happy to continue working on something like that. Um, <clears throat> just to catch you up, we were part of the coalition that passed the Iowa's primary texting law uh, several years ago. Uh, we followed that up with a bill that we wrote um, and was uh, proposed through the governor's office uh, to create a, uh, a felony uh, if you kill somebody while you're texting and driving. And then um, we also followed that up um, with a requirement to have uh, distracted driving added to driver's education classes. Uh, so we've had some really good success, but there's a little bit more that we want to do on the distracted driving front. Uh, the second big bill that we were working on was standard penalties. Currently in Iowa, if a bicyclist is killed, it's a traffic ticket. If a motorist is killed in a traffic crash or a motorcyclist or a pedestrian, it's an enhanced penalty. Now, it's not a big deal. It's a, it's a $1,000 fine versus a $35 fine. Um, and really, you know, that you no know, amount of money is going to bring anybody back. But it's a message that says we're going to treat bicyclists the same way we treat other humans in this state. And uh, so we've been working on that one. And, and uh, yeah, it uh, just didn't quite get across the finish line. There was an amendment attached to it to require bicyclists to, to have red lights on their bikes. Um, certainly you can read more about that on our website um, because we're not, we, we like red lights. We want people to use lights uh, during the daytime uh, as this bill would require. But making it a law shifts the liability. And uh, it also creates some other negative side effects that uh, I don't think that uh, we were ready for. And man, if you had to put uh, 10,000 plus lights on, on RAGBRAI uh, during the daytime. I think you could see that ride from space. So, uh, you know, we'll, uh, we'll continue to work on that. And we'll meet with that legislator uh, this summer and see if we can iron some things out. And then finally, uh, a crosswalk penalty. Because currently in Iowa, you don't have to yield the bicyclists when they're using crosswalks. But we're building all kinds of trails and other things um, that uh, we want to encourage people to use. And uh, so we, we had that one in there, and that made it through the house or part of the way through the house and, and uh, uh, just didn't have enough time to get it pushed over to the Senate. I do want to thank that the countless advocates that uh, really stepped forward. We had uh, uh, a legislative district leader in every one of the House districts um, this year, I, I'll take that back, 85 of the 99, 100 House districts, um, we had a legislative district leader in. And that's really important to have somebody that's that one-on-one -on -one connection. If you are one of those people, especially in rural Iowa, that want to help out, want to be a district leader, contact me. Contact uh, Mark at iowabike.org, and I'd be happy to uh, get you involved because I think that's important. Um, we had... Um, about a thousand people um, activate and, and contact their legislator on any one of those issues. Um, so I think that's uh, that's important. Um, it's really about two percent of people that uh, open the emails actually take action. Um, so I can say that we had 1,129 people that that got involved, and that's super important. But we need to do more. And, and that's the that's the whole secret sauce to, to passing legislation is uh, the legislators either need to, one, know that there's people back home that support this bill and uh, or, or this this policy. And uh, number two, if they don't vote for this, the people back home are going to let them hear about it. A, a pain, if you if you so to speak. Um, so that's what we need, and we just need numbers to really make sure that that's going to happen in the future. All right, I'm going to I'm going to shift gears, and I'm going to talk about our Safe Routes to School program, uh, which I'm really excited about. We have a new employee that's working for us. Matt Berkey is his name. Um, Matt has a lot of uh, uh, gravel dust attached to his bike because he is a big uh, gravel rider. In fact, you can often see him leading. Uh, the Monday Night Gravel Ride over in Iowa City. Uh, if you haven't been on that ride, that's a good time. Um, they can get up to 100 and some people during uh, some of the warmer months, and, and I think we're going to be heading into that season here shortly. Um, anyhow, Matt is tasked with educating kids in Iowa. In fact, we've set out a vision 
uh, that's pretty bold, and, and I think it's important that you know about it. We want to educate every fourth grader in this in Iowa on bike safety. Um, that's 35,000 kids, and that's going to take a lot of work on Matt's behalf. Um, but I think we're up to it, and, and we're trying to find ways that we can scale things up, that we can create turnkey programs that can make it easy for you to get involved and uh, you and your community. Um, so it, it's going to be a lot of work, but we're really, really excited about that. We're just releasing um, the Iowa Bike Rodeo Guide, which is uh, about a 60-page manual uh, that, that takes all of our experience from doing bike rodeos across the state and puts them in a turnkey guide uh, and let's, so if you're, if you're somebody in your community is like, you know, I'd really like to help out. I'd really like to do, a, a, you know, a bike rodeo. I think that would be great. Um, you, you download this guide and suddenly everything you need to know is right there. They got budgets, they got emails, they got agreements for sponsors. They've got just all kinds of things where to find free stuff to do your bike rodeo. Uh, it's all in this guide and it makes it super easy to just get one set up and, and start, uh, Start working on it. Now, don't let me fool you. 60 pages seems long, but it's only 20, well, 22 pages, I think, of text. Uh, and then the rest of it is all appendix sample stuff uh, that you want to be able to copy and paste and, and use in other formats. So, you know, everything from a poster to a press release, anything that you're going to need uh, to do your bike rodeo, that's going to be important. Um I'm going to follow this up because I only have a limited amount of time to talk to you. But if you like the work that we do, um, whether you're an Iowan or not, uh, you can donate. Uh, go to iowabicyclecoalition.org slash gives, and uh, you can make a donation to the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. I also want to tell you about one of those uh, great opportunities that we have uh, coming up. Um, and that's on May 23rd. It's going to be a, a project called the Big Bike Give. This is a day of philanthropy um, for uh, people across the nation to donate to um, Iowa uh, bike and trail nonprofits that desperately need your help. So we're going to have everything from the Iowa Bicycle Coalition to the Dream Team to Black Girls Do Bike uh, to the Iowa Natural Heritage Foundation and a lot of different trail systems across the state. So it is your one-day opportunity to make a splash. Last year, we raised $68,000 for all these groups combined. This year, we want to double that. So I'd like to get everybody involved. Go to bigbikegive.org. Uh, finally, I want to let you know about two events that we have coming up on May 20th is the Pigtails Ride. This is our women-specific ride that starts in Ankeny. Go to pigtailsride.com. And then Bay Coon Ride is coming up on June 17th. You want to get some miles in before you hit Ragbri. This is your opportunity. June 17th, and this starts in ends in Waukee on the Raccoon River Valley Trail. So, Great opportunity to have some fun, support a good cause like the Iowa Bicycle Coalition, and make a difference. Hey, sorry about uh, the length on this one, but I'll do more frequent updates for you. This is Mark Wyatt, the Iowa Bicycle Coalition. Well, listeners, that is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com, or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, just, just go bike! bike.